Eric Mitchell, CEO of LifeFlip Media and also the host and producer of To The Point with Eric Mitchell. He's a personal friend. He's helped me in PR campaigns. He is a true expert in what he does, and he has a mission to help veterans as well. And so it is such a pleasure, Eric, to introduce you, and thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me on. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I am so uh, excited to first of all ask you, um, how did you start Life Flip Media and why did you make the, the decision to make it very veteran focused? Well, that's a great question. I love it. Uh, my reason for Life Flip was simple. When I got out of the military, transition isn't that easy as anybody who's a veteran that's watching will tell you transition is awful. It hasn't improved since my days long ago when I left the Marine Corps. But I wanted to not have to go into law enforcement. I went into tech. Mm. And when I got done with tech. I've been lucky. I was acquired three times by three amazing companies. Uh, and it really left me in a good place. So when I came out, I was like, where can I make the most impact? After running media and marketing for a very large Fortune 500 company, where can I make the most impact? Obviously, tech was very well, very well saturated in the Silicon Valley where I was. So I decided, why don't I go to the one group where I really don't to crash down a door to make ways with them, which is my own kind, which is I target on veteran businesses. So we look basically at Forbes, a top 25 veteran businesses you should know. This is over five years ago, because our company's five years old. <laughs> but found that list and decided, let's go do that. And the reason for like life flip is basically turning their lives upside down, taking a small company that selling t-shirts out, out of the back of their car and turning them into a almost $200 million brand in under 10 years. What? Yeah, yeah that's just little goals like that, you know. Well, yeah, like small, small achievements. <laughs> wow, don't ever overshoot. My goodness. <laughs> that is really incredible. Can we know the name of, uh, of these brands, couple of brands you worked with? Uh, I, I, I can't say the name of the sugar company due to the fact that they were recently – I'll give away that they were recently acquired. Okay, I'm going to go do some research. Name, but uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Wow, congratulations. I mean, what an amazing accomplishment. And so now tell us more about your pivot into the television show. You know, the television show actually came from my almost 16-year-old daughter. We, When COVID-19 first struck, obviously working in the media like I do, I heard everything before most people did, and I had to deal with it. So, of course, like anybody who works in this industry – we can't keep our mouths shut. If we can't tell our friends on the phone, we tell our family, which they don't want to know. Just like when Kobe Bryant, unfortunately, passed, same thing. They didn't want to know that I knew, like, at the same time as TMZ, all of us who work in media were getting phone calls. So same kind of restaurant. She came to me, said, Dad, why don't we produce a show that feels good? And I was like, okay. I was like, let's produce a show that feels good. And then I kind of pitched it to some of my friends who are producers, and they're like, you know. We could almost use this like a minor league system where we have everybody on video. You'll make sure you know what they're supposed to look like square in the photo and we can use it to check them out to see if we want to use them. Because now, as we all know, network TV is 100% remote. We can't have people in studios. So everybody That's is using great. Skype and Zoom and StreamYard and EKM or whatever they have. So we came up with this and she's the big behind. So she's actually, I give her credit as the executive producer of the show because she came up with it, but, you know, John Krasinski had his show that came out, the Good News Network came out almost, I think, at the same time as us, but obviously John has a bigger budget than we do. Yeah, a little bit. When, you, when you're Jim on The Office and an amazing actor, <laughs> and you're married to an amazing actor. You know, I thought those jams that he showed were new. <laughs> that is, but you know what? I think, I think... He acquired it and then killed it, so... Yeah, I know, which which is interesting and which made me want to ask you more questions about how is it being received? What are you um, the most interested in producing? And um, what do you think about working with your daughter? Can I start with the last question? For yeah. Me? Love her to death. Uh, I love working with my daughter. There's, It's a great to have somebody who looks at it from a different pair of eyes. I always look from it from the media producer and someone who sits in front of a camera all the time for national TV hits, talking about sports. But when you're producing your own show and you're thinking about what kind of guests do we want, what kind of show you, it's amazing to have this next generation that's been raised on technology and cell phones yeah. and what they watch. I actually, It's cool to have her brain, and she kind of gives me 
let's change it up. This is more hip. It'll catch viewers. We should go with this. So it's interesting to have such a young insight and she loves it. Plus she wants to pursue journalism. So it's. Of course she does. To, to I do love that. I do, right. So there's that. Uh, how is the show being uh, received? People seem to love it, which uh -huh. honestly, the first 30 days, I thought we would do 30 and be done. And then people started watching all the time. And then 45 days hit and we started averaging almost a, over a thousand live views on oh, the show. Incredible. And then the last like 20 days, we're getting shows that are reaching hundreds of thousands. Just the last eight days of our show, we have hit over half a million viewers in an eight day wow. period, which when we pulled those stats, we were just blown away. And that's the same time as learning how to use YouTube, which is an amazing tool to yeah. use and channel because it's so much more than social media. It's almost like having your own network at your own mm -hmm. hand. Where you can produce your own. So it's been well received. Our audience continues to grow. I love that. It was a part of this. I didn't think, I didn't even think about it. Like who will like us and we'll have fans and people who show up and they want to talk to me and our production team because we have a great team. It's not just my daughter. I got to give a shout out to Jordan Gelber, uh, who's a great, great uh, friend of our show. She helps us produce it and her sidekick, Victoria. They really are the nuts and bolts that find uh -huh. amazing guests. And then we have amazing agency partners that will say, hey, I have this person. Do you want to interview him? So on any given day, I can interview the great Montel Williams and then talk to somebody like Ron Gold, who just both of those guys together, you would look at both of them and go, well, they, how do they go together? They're both really inspiring. Like uh, they both have different cool. stories. So that's what I really love about this. Where do I see it going? Oh, I'd love to see us picked up uh, by a major network. I feel that we are better than a lot of shows that you see out there today because we really will tackle the tough topics that a lot of shows won't. Uh, we'll bring the right guests on to talk about it. We'll, you know, and they're not the same talking heads. I'm always rotating through. I have some familiar faces that come back. They're friends, and I want to help them build their brands. But we've had some amazing people request to be regulars on our show. And I've listed one of them being Montel Williams. But there's others, and I'm always kind of caught off guard by that. Like, I'm producing the show in my, like, in a spare bedroom in my house. I mean, just like Jimmy <laughs> well, Fallon. Well, this goes to show, like, the talent and the quality of the content that you're bringing to the show. And I can personally attest to the quality. And I just think that what you're doing is just absolutely fantastic. Lauren, I'm sorry. that I feel like I've just totally taken over this interview yeah. because I am you're such a fan. I, and <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Eric. And, again, like you, mm -hmm. we've had great experiences together. What I really appreciate about Eric is exactly his to the pointness. So I, I frankly couldn't, I couldn't better brand you. That's just, mm -hmm. you know, what it came down to was, you know, finally somebody who actually is willing to just have the honest conversation, which I absolutely love. Well, and we need so much now, so much more than ever before. I think we do. And to, to one of the questions that we have been asking all our guests on, the, on uh, this particular episode, which is all about the pivot and going from the military back to civilian life, and then how did you create something bigger to help other veterans make their way and, and build their lives back up? But from all that you've heard and all the people you've been talking to, are there any common themes that are coming out right now about how to really keep your head in the game, how to, you know, how to keep building instead of falling under with all the stress and the unknown and the uncertainty that we're experiencing? I love that question. And yes, the resounding yes. I've always said adapt and overcome. I've said this, obviously it's a Marine Corps term. Anybody watching is like, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, Marines say it all the time. But what I've learned is each branch, each different veteran I talk to has something that is like it. And even Marines that I talk to, which is wacky, not all of us say adapt and overcome, but I've heard Marine Corps mindset or military mindset or a Ranger mindset. But every person that I talk to that happens to be a veteran, that's the big thing that they're doing to keep their head in the game because now they're actually in the same boat with everyone else who's looking for work with 40 million Americans un unemployed. It's almost even the playing field for them. Well, before you were a veteran trying to transition in, now you're, a, you're competing with everybody else and you have a good shot because everybody is at home. People, some people have been out of work for six months. So you're able to be in that same boat and it makes it a competition. So you just basically – I'm encouraging people on our show just to keep your head up and always have guests on at least weekly to provide that. And not just for the military, but for everybody. Cause I think it's key. 
for all of us as a country to stay united and by sharing it, and I don't want to separate veterans from first responders to healthcare workers to civilians. That doesn't help anybody. So basically I, I always say in our show, I'm like, Hey, these tips not only work for veterans, but most people don't have to worry about what their previous rank was. I think that just applies to us. So it's like, yeah. I was a Colonel. Well, yeah, you probably need to humble yourself a bit because you know, you're, are, you're, you know, the recruiter's not going to care that you were a colonel. They're, right, now you're just the guy they might not even know what a needs a job. They might hit you with a quote from the office, like, oh, uh, you know, a colonel, that's the highest rank in the army. No, it's not. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't need creedisms, so. <laughs> well, that is so interesting. So, um, Eric, how can people get to your show? Uh, simply go type to the point tv.com that's our website and or find us on social media at to the point tv we try to do our best to brand it which on almost all social we were successful except like facebook somebody to the point tv well, that sounds very easy to yeah, we'll put that up on the screen and we'll also put it in with the blog post when we post it but eric i really hope our viewers will reach out to you and start watching because your shows are amazing the energy and just um just the level of honor you bring to it is so refreshing and we wanted to have you on to thank you for that because you've impacted our lives in an amazing way so thank you thank you so and much. we will have you back